Okay, good morning everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn with the Active Trend Trader. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today. Uh, welcome to the How to Make Money Trading Stocks webinar. And I just want to say welcome to everybody. Just got a nice uh, uh, little note from one of our members uh, who's uh, uh, here from around the, the Pleasanton area here in California. But uh, he's currently over in Tel Aviv and he's in his... Uh, Joining us from Tel Aviv. So we've got Tel Aviv, Ireland covered. We've got uh, folks all around the world. So I'm just really, really grateful that people are plugging in. And there we go. And so, uh, Mike, let me know if you're there. Okay. Well, Mike is... Uh, I know he's there, but he's not choosing not to speak right now. So I want to welcome everybody. We'll be getting over uh, for the uh, premium active trend trading folks. I sent an alert this morning to buy into uh, YY on a potential earnings bounce. Uh, um, unfortunately, the um, template that I used uh, to put that order out had some other miscellaneous stuff in it, and so the corrected one has already gone out. Uh, the important part was the buy point was anywhere between $60 and $60.50. We were filled on that at $60.48, and so we'll be monitoring and, and managing that trade moving forward. So, yeah, Mike, uh, let me see if he came back on here. Okay, let's get going. So I want to remind everybody that everything we do talk about today is for uh, training purposes only. Traders should always, anytime, you know, learn you can learn a great deal on how to trade by just doing paper trades and and it helps one keep the emotions out, out a little bit better and and it's just a, it's a wonderful practice habit to get into so one of the things that i literally love about active trend trading is one uh, i use the old uh, um, uh, analogy of you know you teach a man to fish and and he can take care of himself the rest of his life and um, which is absolutely true. And um, we do that with uh, our midweek market uh, sanity checks, which we call our midweek training. And it provides clear and simple approaches to uh, basically help us become better traders. And it's for all premium active trend trading members. And this, fe and this feature has been a hallmark of active trend trading since, we, uh, since its inception. And we are pushing over Oh, about 20 plus hours worth of training videos that are now on the website. Um, at the suggestion of one of our members, we have archived uh, a large majority of those, and we'll be just basically keeping the you know this year's uh, on the on the main page for the uh, video uh, training page. However, if you just go to the archives, if you want to look at any of the old. Um, relevant information. All the training starts until we get our re-recordings done. Uh, all, the re, uh, all the training starts at about the, you know, halfway through, somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes into the video uh, is when the actual training starts. Last week, uh, this week we covered using weekly and monthly charts for better entries. And last week, on this past Wednesday, we covered the HMA, the whole uh, moving average as as we've uh, brought that in for an enhancement on the active trend trading system. We've gotten lots of emails from folks who who are um, you know taking a look at that and um, really liking the potential on it. How it would have uh, kept them out of some trades that uh, could have saved some money early on. So. I'm very thankful that folks are taking a look at that. I will be updating this weekend and getting the the uh, rules for a ATTS uh, updated. That will include the um, uh, the HMA, the whole uh, moving average. And so, Mike, you back with us? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. I had a little trouble with my telephone access. I had to dial back in again. Hey, since, since you mentioned the whole moving average, I mean, you know, we, we tend to look at charts, you know, in hindsight, and I know that we've been doing that, with, you know, with the HMA. And now I've got my, you know, my live charts in front of me as we're doing this. Yeah. 
And uh, the uh, eight-period home moving average on the daily chart of the uh, S&T 500 is uh, changing color today, you know, now in real time. And certainly, you know, we haven't closed yet, and I don't know if that color change is going to hold through the close. But if the price action kind of stays where it is, I imagine the color change will hold. And here in real time, we are seeing that. Yep. And so that's, yeah, one of the things that's really amazing. Uh, the, um, and, and if it does change, and we'll, we'll cover that when we go over the, in the individual index charts, but uh, yet yeah, it has changed. And now if we're utilizing it as basically an on-off switch, until we get down to a strong support level, we're not going to be looking for a long trade, uh, but we will be looking at for as long as it stays pink, we'll be looking for a, uh, uh, a trade to the downside with the uh, with the, the um, index ETFs. And so, yeah, Mike, if you could, uh, one of the things that somebody said um, is is, is uh, I don't know if you do you have a headset? Or are you talking directly to your phone? Uh, through my phone. So oh, okay. I don't, have, I don't have a headset. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to monitor and, and listen to the recording uh, because somebody said on our Wednesday night session uh, it was a little bit uh, 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 the recording for when the comments you were making um, was a little bit weak and I don't know, it's a vo probably a volume thing. I don't, I don't know what it is, but uh, if you could write, you know, write into the mic and we'll We'll press and go forward. Yeah, actually, you know, my comments uh, coming through might not be a bad thing. <laughs> no, man, I'd say. So here we are. Last week, we were basically bouncing back and forth between support and resistance and drifting higher into the end of the week. Uh, one of the big uh, catalysts for doing that was probably people uh, making those last moment adjustments and contributions to their IRAs. One, that's one area. And also just a, a natural, you know, upward drift that tends to happen when the, it's a light news kind of day uh, in the markets. This week, what do we hit? We hit resistance, and we're bouncing down from that on all the index. And so the question I'm left with going into the weekend, okay, has a correction started? Uh, or are we just, you know, for right now, we'll be going to play it as in we are in a horizontal or a lateral trading zone and so we'll look for where's the strong support where's the strong resistance and and act appropriately around then uh, the S&P when I wrote this up was looking for support um, but it was a good early sell-off uh, we've dropped off we'll be looking at the charts here shortly um, NASDAQ NASDAQ was showing a little bit strong stronger weakness I don't know if that's a, a proper term but uh, enhanced weakness yesterday compared to the S&P and uh, it too has actually dropped to a support level and so my question is will the buyers show up or are the buyers going to just basically stand aside this time to get a better reset on the market Russell um, ditto uh, regarding that so outside influences impacting the market potentially this week are earnings um, you know, the, the reactions to earnings seem to be very stock specific uh, with no real market movers up to this point. And so, you know, one of the, the stocks is coming down with uh, earnings on 427 is Apple. Apple does have the potential to be a market mover because it's such a large percentage of, what is it, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and, and now the Dow. And so if... Um, if Apple hiccups whatsoever, uh, that could uh, that could have either a catalyst to the downside, or if Apple comes out and just all everything is wonderful and great, and um, with uh, huge projections on future growth and all that kind of stuff, then that could be a catalyst to take us back up in the indices. Um, Greece is in the news again. And while Greece isn't, <clears throat> you know, you would think a small little country like Greece would not be a market mover, but I think uh, there's a lot of people out there that are apprehensive about the potential domino effect 
And uh, the EU was definitely not happy with how Greece came out with, uh, uh, had asked for an extension on their payback plan. So you got any comments on Greece, Mike? Oh, I have tons of comments on <laughs> Greece, but, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep it limited. I, you know, in the, in the overall scheme of things, and Greece doesn't matter, a whole lot. I mean, you know, what you said about them being kind of small is, is absolutely correct. Um, but, you know, it's getting a lot of headlines, and, and I think that there's a real risk that um, what will happen when, whenever this resolves with Greece, it'll be almost anticlimactic. Um, you know, one of those, you know, buy the rumors, sell the news, or you yeah, know, sell yeah. the rumors by the news type things. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen here. I mean, it's a foregone conclusion that Greece is, you know, they're, they're essentially bankrupt. And, and you know, they're, they're going to default on their debt. And, um, you know, how's the market going to react to that when, when it finally happens and it's uh, officially, you know, recognized? Uh, I think it, that the impact on the markets won't be as great as some people are afraid. Yeah, you know, at the at the last uh, Bay Area Moneymaker meeting uh, at the beginning of the month, Mike, I, I made a suggestion for Greece. I said, you know, they should let Disney take over Greece and just run it run it as a, uh, 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 you know, one of those uh, uh, resorts, and uh, they would probably do a lot better. Yeah, yeah, re re restore, you know, restore the uh, Parthenon to its original. Uh... Exactly. I mean, you know, and and they could have high high employment and all that kind of stuff, and and you, but you just run it as a uh, oh uh, oh gosh, what's you know either Disneyland or or this would be uh, Disney Greece. I mean, you know, it has a ring to it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, China. Uh, resting or cooling, that's a big question. Uh, yeah, we'll look, take a look at FSXI here a little bit, but uh, it clearly a gap down today. Some of the folks got into a trade on the FXI oh, a few days ago uh, with the anticipation it was going to finally uh, fall out uh, and, and do some cooling off, and it may be doing that. Uh, the quarter's growth was about 7%, which is a little bit lower than expected, but the prime minister came out and said that he will, you know, they may do another round of QE. And I'm just thankful that the QE didn't happen today uh, because we needed some reset in the market. Yeah, well, you know, China has been setting up for a fall. And, and the news out of China, I mean, China's, uh, the Shanghai Composite, uh, pulled down severely uh, overnight when we were all sleeping here. And uh, the futures uh, on the com Shanghai Composite are continuing to drop. And the, the news is that the uh, financial regulators in China are, um, number one, requiring that the uh, stock brokerage firms more closely monitor the margin trading that's going on over there because that has gone absolutely ballistic. Yeah, and, and um, they're also recommending or requiring that they make more stocks available to be shorted, um, enhancing the shorting capabilities over there. And it's a recognition, I think, by the uh, financial officials in China that things are getting, you know, way overheated, and uh, they're they're trying to cool it down a bit. Yeah, uh, and that's you know that's what happened overnight there. Yeah, and as I said, we'll take a look at FXI a little bit later. Uh, FXI is one of those, you know, ETFs where because it does, you know, emulate the, uh, I think it's the, the, uh, the China uh, large cap uh, stocks, uh, because the Chinese market typically is closed by the time we are coming in, we're getting kind of old data and all that kind of stuff, and so there's, it's prone to a lot of gaps. And if you're doing if you're doing option trades on it, it's it's a little bit flip a coin and let's see what happens. But uh, uh, very interesting. Those who who did some put trades on uh, FXI should have come up with a nice uh, uh, bounce uh, uh, today uh, as it as the price drops significantly. Um, one of the things that continues to be an issue, and I don't know, uh, and we'll watch this is what I, I'm going to deem this bad news inversion. 
um, the meaning of that being bad news is is leading to a higher market and and good news tends to lead is leading to a, a lower market and it's really a little bit uh, it reminds me of uh, uh, an earlier day like back uh, earlier time in the market like in the back in the uh, uh, mid 90s to in the early you know mid 90s at the the uh, turn of the millennium back in 1999 and 2000 where you get all this bad news but the market would continue to push itself higher 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 uh, but eventually the weight of the of the bad news does take it effect its effect but right now I'm just going to call it bad news inversion bad news is taken as good news for the market and pushed higher for the US market that's typically because uh, any bad news in the economy, folks are sitting there going, ah, the Fed's not going to raise, you know, raise rates. And um, so it, it's kind of, it's almost like it's counterproductive, Mike, because how much are they going to raise rates when they raise it? A quarter percent? Well, initially they're talking about a quarter percent, which in the overall scheme of things, after being at zero for over six years, uh, it, it's really insignificant. Yeah, it's crazy. And so it's crazy, and that's what they're hung up on. So does that make us crazy because we keep no? Okay, hey, here's the uh, percentage of stocks over the 20-day moving average from last week. We were sitting up there about 63. We were still um, we had highlighted this numerous times on the pre, you know, for for going back to gosh December where we started making the first uh, lower high. Uh, price coming out of last week was it had come up hit the hit the uh, downtrending line and but then rebound we kept getting these you know the sellers would come in look to be taking charge and then bam turn right back around the uh, and we'll move to the the chart for this week and what we'll see is oh my goodness um, this line can up yes, approximately there, but this week if we get all the way back up into the action in the first part of the week was similar to last week. Uh, got a little bit of a sell-off Monday, uh, a more significant sell-off on Tuesday, but then we rebounded. But what was interesting as the market was rebounding close to its prior highs, again, fewer of the stocks in the NYSC were actually participating in the rally. And um, and we started turning back down off this. I'm starting to look at this chart with the candlesticks, simply because um, the candlesticks work on any kind of chart. And as we're seeing, Wednesday we get this shooting star, and sure enough, Thursday was a little bit of a down day, and then today it's like the uh, the floor dropped out. Uh, the market is <clears throat> back down to. You know, a support. You know, searching for a support level, and this is and so far today been an excellent sell-off, don't you think, Mike? Oh well, yeah, and um, I think I'm, I'm looking at a five-minute chart as we're going through this, and you know, I think we've put in a bottom for the day, you know, so far. Yeah. But we're really not getting much of a bounce off that bottom. Yeah, and that's typically when that doesn't happen. We'll see how it finishes the day, but when that, you know, when we, when when um, the sell the buyers don't step back in, because on you know these days where you see this lower wick here, that's where the buyers step back in, pushed it back up. Um, again, fewer stocks participate in the upside, uh, primarily due to the weighting. Uh, we don't see that much of an impact, you know, we don't see the impact so much on the individual indexes because uh, uh, the, the, the NASDAQ and the S&P, the COMP, the Dow are weighted indices which uh, give more credence to certain stocks like Apple and, and, and uh, the like. And uh, Apple has just been kind of hanging in there. We'll see what we'll see what goes forward uh, when the when the heavier weighted stocks begin to sell off. That's when things get really really interesting. 
So yeah, yeah, and that's what's going to have to happen to see the indexes as a whole, um, you know, start start showing that kind of selling pressure. Yes, so okay, let's take a look at the um, um, the S and P. The S and P. We've been talking about how we drew this um, uh, resistance zone in here uh, at the uh, gosh, as we were coming up this leg of the of the of the move up. We drew this in and said, you know, where it is likely that the 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 uh, index will find resistance in this area, will it turn back down? And sure enough, um, as you can see, yesterday we had a uh, bearish harami, and today we get a slight gap down and a nice sell-off down to a support level, which was identified at, at 2080. We can almost get rid of this 2087 level if we move back, you know, but because it, it basically sliced through the eight day, sliced through this is the eight day EMA, the 20 day EMA, and found support. And here is the, as Mike was talking about earlier, you can see with the whole moving average, this is the eight period uh, whole moving average. With the big downturn today, it has now turned pink. And so one of the go, no go uh, classifications on the haul is as long as this is pink, uh, until we get down to legitimate support, strong support, we don't look at a, you know, we don't trade to the long side. If this remains pink and starts to do one of these numbers, it does starts to do one of these numbers. Oftentimes, what you'll see is similar to what we see over here. Price action during the intraday will bounce up back up around the uh, hull and then go back into a sell-off. Um, and so if this sell-off maintains itself, then we'll look to see where we're going to finish. And then if we do make a rebound, We'll be watching the 8 and watch the 8 EMA and the uh, hull for a potential downside trade, at least down here to the 2064, or if this uh, little uptrending uh, triangle line uh, would also be another good place for a support bounce. And um, so this happened on the S&P. And let's take a look over here on the weekly one of the things we've been talking about for some time now is just basically this negative divergence that's been going on. Well, it's not really negative divergence. It's it's reflecting what it was back here when we made this high. It was negative, certainly negative divergence, and uh, the indicator itself has kind of emulated that. Got a little bit of a momentum pop. This pop, well, I won't call it a pop. A little bit of a nudge upward this week. Um, but again, if we, cl you know, close below these moving averages, both the whole and the eight-week moving average, then we're probably going to go down and retest down in this 2064 or the uptrending line, or our worst case, we could get all the way down to approximately this level, which is about 20, uh, 2040, if it gets all the way or complete 100% retracement. And then we'll see if the if the cards reset themselves. The Nasdaq. One thing on the Nasdaq is. Uh, as you can see, yesterday the Nasdaq actually the call had already changed color with yesterday's price action. Now that can be a clue, and some people the way they trade the hole is that if it turns pink and you close below, they'll go ahead and and do a, an early entry to short that with a stop just immediately above that particular uh, candle. Uh, but as we can see, we're we're getting a gap below both the 8-day moving average and the 20-day moving average. And where does it stop? 
almost dead in its track right there at just above the 43, uh, 46 level, which was a uh, long time support, uh, or there's a little support zone here, uh, between about 43.50 and, and this level. Um, could push that down probably to 43.40 for, an, for a better, you know, kind of range for that level, that zone of support. And we'll be watching this candle today to see if it continues, if it closes in the lower half of the, the candle, that would be considered a uh, bearish uh, continuation of a, you know, put, it increases the potential of a continuation of a bearish move. Over here on the weekly chart, again, just working between the resistance level identified by the green rectangle. And if we, okay, here's, here's one of the tricky things about uh, uh, candlestick interpretation is normally if we close right where we are today, the, you, we would call that a, a, um, um, a dark cloud. However, because it's not at the end of a, an uptrend, it is not a dark cloud cover um, because basically most of the candlestick names for reversal signals, remember, have to either be at the end of an uptrend or the end of a downtrend. But we can say that, okay, if it closes right there, that yes, that is a bearish uh, candlestick for the week. And if we drop this level of support right here, that would give us an indication that we're, we're going to be going back down and revisiting the 4300 uh, zone approximately. What, do you, what else do you see in there, Mike? Um, well, you, you know, you, you get these... Uh, You're breaking up, uh, You get these left-right... Get these left-right uh, candlestick combinations on the weekly chart that are, yeah. you know, kind of bearish. And um, and we are seeing you know weakening in momentum as prices consolidating uh, in this zone of um, you know multi-year highs. So you know we're, we're just going sideways on the daily chart within that within that weekly consolidation that's been going on now oh for you know a couple of months. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Exactly. And. Um, you know, this this could be the, um, the the pause that the market needs before another up leg. It could be the beginning of something else, uh, and we're just not going to know until it breaks out of this consolidation mode. Yeah, and so one of the things when the market is kind of consolidated, I want to know the projections because they because oftentimes the market, if it does, uh, st you know, dive to the to the downside is from this high here, this day here, in other words, this day over here on the daily chart, down to this level back here at the 4285 uh, level is about a four and a half, four to four and a half percent uh, move. If we move all the way back down to the 4089 level, 4090 level, that is about a, uh, a little bit over eight percent. A full 10 percent retracement would actually take us back down to the 4,000 range, and of course the 4,000 range, if if the market really, really started to, to, to churn to the downside, um, there is a psychological value at the 4,000 level, um, and so we'll, we'll watch and see what takes place there, but I always like to kind of have a projection. How far might it go? And you can do either one of two things. You can, you can measure it and do the percentage, or, or you can lay in a, a Fibonacci, which is a, another great way to uh, manage where the stock or where the, in, where the index may go. Let's take a look at the Russell. Okay, Russell. As you can see on the Russell, the, um, we get a nice gap down. Slice through the 8, the 20, and also the whole moving average has now turned pink. Um, yeah, but we've got support at the 1250 level. We've got support. Yeah, the Russell tends to do one thing that's very, very interesting. The, uh, the Russell tends to kind of move in up, 
approximate, this is just a rule of thumb, approximately $10 ranges. And as you can see, um, it's finding support at about $12.50. If it fails at $12.50, it'll probably find some additional support at $12.40. And again, down here, then it's got ultimate res uh, support down here between $12.30 and $12.25. So if we got all the way back down to 1225, how much of a ret retracement would it be? Only 4%. It has to go a lot deeper. Let's see, from here. Where's the 10%? The 10% on, the, on, on this particular index would be... Um, down around 1140, 1150. Yeah, 1140, 1150. So the, uh, you know, around where it was finding support at the beginning of the year. <clears throat> it's, it's interesting how those clues come together like that, Mike. Uh, I long ago came to the realization that it's almost never a coincidence. <laughs> I'm going to throw up... Throw up Hey, go back before. Go back to the weekly on the Russell for a second, please. Okay, certainly. I think you know you haven't drawn it in yet, but it'd be fairly easy for you to do so. Uh, again, you know this kind of megaphone broadening top, yeah. uh, topping pattern on, on the weekly chart of the Russell is uh, pretty pretty obvious and pretty significant. There, that completes the megaphone. Yeah, and, and if you were to do an extension, uh, again, if, if history holds, and keeping in mind that this is a weekly chart and things can take a long time to play out, but, but if, if, um, if, if history you know, repeats itself and these broadening top megaphone formations, if this one plays out the way they historically usually do, the extension of that lower uh, trend line could be where the Russell eventually wants to go, and, and that's going to take it down below a thousand. And yep. it would probably take several months for that to happen, you know, if and when it happens. Um, but it has, in the past, uh, proven to be a fairly reliable long-term downside target. Yeah, exactly. And and you know who knows. And you know we're we're pushing you know, almost completed with the first four months of 2015. And so in reality, you know, working within this megaphone top is certainly something that uh, Russell could do, but it will be a journey to get back down to the lower portion of, of the megaphone. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to happen this year um, because, because typically it takes, like, the last time it set this thing up, it took, you know, to get down to the bottom of the megaphone, it took 272, 227 days. And so that's one of the things to kind of keep, a, you know, a mind on. Um, and look how long it took it to get from here back up to the top of it. It took 181 days. That's, that's a, you know, half year. So if yeah. we project it out another half year, it could it could provide some interesting trading opportunities, you know, moving forward. And, oh, what? Well, it's not it's not going to go down in a straight line. That's for sure. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to run here real quick to the uh, FXI, and just give a real quick update on this. We've been watching this, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Mike did this wonderful article about the the uh, overvaluation, the uh, exhaustion type gaps that were happening on the uh, Shanghai index, Shanghai, Shanghai Composite. And a uh, very interesting thing going on today is, you know, it, we basically, as I say, this works a lot like an ADR. Um, we, you know, it came in and put in this bullish signal on, I think it's Monday, gap down, then it ran back up, gapped up yesterday. And but but what was happening? You got see the momentum starting to fall off. And then all of a sudden, just a little bit of bad news coming out of, of China, and bam, a drop you know significantly. Um, 
it, these kind of ETFs are a little bit tougher to trade because they keep doing these crazy gaps. Uh, but now that the whole moving average has turned pink, uh, we'll be watching to see if we do a nice steady pullback or if we'll do one of these jagged type of things down to, I mean, we could actually run all the way down to, um, if we assume we have support at 4,800, which is about the midsection of this large weekly candle, and then another level of support at about 46, and another level of support when it broke out earlier in the year at 44. Um, it's, it's, you know, quite interesting to watch it, but right now it is back in a watch mode. If, if you got into a trade up here, and I think a couple of folks did buy some puts the, uh, out, out several months up here at the 52 level, then you were rewarded today very, very nicely. It, yeah, in, interesting how that eight period home moving average actually changed colors a couple of days ago. Yeah, it did. I mean, it does its its first down, and this is one of those one of the nuances I've been learning about the uh, the whole Mike is that oftentimes it changed you know it didn't change color here, but it was below the the um, whole eight here on Wednesday. It did change color. Because oftentimes when it drops below, uh, it actually won't change color, which I'm finding that on stocks like that, it's telling me that there's momentum still in it to the upside. And so just, you know, to be watch it very closely. So it, because uh, you would think that, that if you had a drop, then the next day it's still closed below. Uh, um, it would basically, you know, uh, change color, but it doesn't do that all, all, every time. But because it did, and as you can see yesterday with the pop-up yesterday and then the drop today, it maintained its pink color. Yeah. Good, good example on the weekly chart, uh, <clears throat> the weekly candlesticks on, on FXI of a dark cloud cover. Yep. Uh, with this week's candle, I think. And, and with that kind of formation, as far away from those weekly moving averages as price action still is, yep. Um, there's more downside to come you know, with this. Yeah, I, I mean, it might do some retesting, but uh, but that's that's okay. I wanted to go back and just highlight one other thing on the Russell. I want to. Um, and it's again, it's it's utilizing the whole moving average. Is I want to highlight the. Uh, that once the color changes from green to pink, um, then the you know the level of the pink starts to become a very good place to look for okay uh, for potential uh, entry buy points either or sell points in this case in the case of the Russell um, because once it drops then it, as it approaches it that becomes a very interesting place to potentially uh, enter a trade, and um, and that happens quite often. As you can see, this pullback that happened at the beginning of 2014, we get a drop, changes colors, they get a rebound the following day. And so, if you just drew a, a, a either a um, drew a little trend line in there or a, a price level line uh, along with an alert, that would tell you, okay, I've re come back up to that level, and it's it's the point to make a decision uh, with it still pointing down. Hey, that's where I want to jump in, and it's a lot more. Um, uh, it's it's um, less risky to make the decision. You know, to go ahead and try to get in here than saying okay, in the in the end of day, and in a day is fine, but just be aware that there may be some opportunities throughout the market day. Very interesting, and it does a similar thing on the daily charts, but I but I found it very pronounced on the uh, weekly charts. And if it does a reversal like it did at the first part of uh, December, uh, January here in, in 2015, then you're going to know and you're going to limit the damage uh, on on a uh, position that you might have gotten into. So let's see what we else we have here. 
Okay. Most of you are familiar with uh, the five pillars of the active trend trading system that we, we uh, try to follow of identifying what to trade. And we focus on both I, uh, top quality IBD stocks and uh, index ETFs and occasionally some specialty ETFs like we have for um, the oil futures and uh, looking at the, the Chinese market. Uh, I want to highlight this chart today because it's kind of reflective. This is an alert that we sent out this morning on um, uh, YY. YY is doing a very good job of holding the support here just below the $60 level. And so what's coming up on YY? Two weeks from now, earnings on 5-5 on five five after market close. And it's holding the support. We have, and this is the one exception to the uh, modifications to the rules with the home moving average that we can get into a long trade even if the, if the line is pink is where when you're down dancing, when you're bouncing off an, uh, uh, an identified level of strong support. And as you can see, that support actually goes all the way across to that's where it did its former breakout. So it's just doing a nice little pullback. Steve Bigelow calls this a J-hook pattern. If we stay, and then this connecting the highs here, that's a bull flag because we've got a nice little uptrend going. Pullback, bull flag, and there's two potential entry points. We chose a little bit the more aggressive one this morning is bouncing off of that support there. Uh, the other is letting it move above the bull uh, flag by anywhere from 10 cents to 25 cents, uh, you know, doing your estimate. And then uh, the anticipation, you know, the expectation is we're going to break back up to the bull flag line because earnings, we do a little bit of a pre-earning run. We've got our first target right here at 65. And then we'll try to hold on to the remaining shares all the way until the day of earnings. But we will sell out of them uh, uh, prior to, you know, the close of market on 5-5. And we'll be going back and just double checking to make sure all those dates are correct, which uh, as of today they are. Um, but market pullback will provide resets. We'll see numerous stocks reset. Um, a pullback to support, rebound back to the swing high is the expected move. And it, you know, as you can see, the swing high here is actually up here about 66ish. Well. I always, rather than taking the absolute high of the swing high, I'll cheat to, you know, a little bit less than that because I want to be taken out on strength moving up. And then secondly, the plus is earnings run. Um, a lot of stocks have a tendency to do an earnings run going into the, to the, uh, two weeks prior to earnings, and you know we'll continue to watch this and see how it's doing. Uh, we were filled on this particular trade today at sixty dollars and forty-eight cents, and then for the option traders, we also did a little uh, uh, option trade where we bought a contract of the sixty-two fifty that expires the week of earnings, and there's. Two anticipations on that. One, as we get closer to earnings, the volatility oftentimes just races higher. And so uh, oftentimes you don't have to get a lot of stock movement to get a actual gain from the option. And so um, if we move back above that level prior to earnings, then we will close that option. Well, regardless, we will close that option on the day of earnings. Uh, when the volatility is really, really high. And going into next week, since it does have weekly options on it, I also sold, excuse me, <coughs> I sold a, uh, a call option, the $64 call option that expires next Friday. Um, that will basically reduce the price of the call. And I was in, in the call for $2.25. And 
and I sold the call option at 65 cents. Therefore, if that expires at, you know, goes to approximately zero, I've reduced my, my, the value of, or my cost basis for that call that I got into. So that's basically, we just entered that trade today. And so we kind of covered all, all of this, some of the long trades we've been looking at, why, why, QIHU may be setting up, uh, uh, Jazz has already kind of broken out and, and is getting ready for, or it's it's not broken out, but it's approaching resistance. CB, uh, Cyber, VDSI, Tesla are all pot providing some potential. Tesla may do a pre-earnings run after it pulls back, after its its uh, uh, move up over the last few weeks. USO, UCO, if you remember that uh, Mike. Uh, brought UCO to the table a couple of weeks ago. Those who got into that are up nicely on UCO, and as it continues to rally with the oil, uh, the crude oil, and then of course some of the folks who did do the FXI short June 52 put um, were able to either hold, still hold the position, or close out a portion of the position today for a nice profit. So, Mike, that's it for today. That all that all sounds good, <clears throat> and so that all sounds good. The, the interesting thing I'm noting before we sign off for today, uh, you know, with, with the market index action, you know, we've had a few days in the past couple of weeks where the first hour or so <clears throat> the market was open, uh, you got some pretty hard selling, and then it just found a bottom and it bounced real hard. Yep. You know, off of that bottom, where by the end of the day you end it either up on, on the indexes or at least down a little bit, but you know, not not quite as much. And and so far, at least today, um, we're not getting that kind of action. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We're down and we're staying down. Yes. And so, uh, and so, we'll, you know, we'll see what takes place with that. Um, as, as we've seen from the, the indices that that uh, they've been having these big daily ranges, continue to have those big daily ranges showing the the one inconsistency in the market, but also um, it, it, I, I almost treated it like it's a, a, a doji kind of a candle where it's indecision, but where one day you're up to resistance and the next day you're all the way down to, to support, which is just... It, it drives you nuts if you're trying to trade it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's just the environment in, uh, we're in. Uh, I think uh, again, at least as far as the Nasdaq and the S and P are concerned, and and probably the Dow also, uh, we're seeing some very significant resistance now for for a period of a couple of months um, at, at the levels that we keep pulling down from. And again. Um, you don't know if the markets are going to want to break out through those resistance levels or if this is going to be the beginning of a more significant um, correction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, it, but it, you know, it, it could be because um, there's just been a lot of resistance to, you know, more forward price action at, at these levels like around 2100 on the S&P. 5,000 on the NASDAQ composite, uh, yeah. 18,000 on the Dow. Um, you know, after many years of, of nothing but buying with very little in the way of corrections along the way, I mean, we may have run into a ceiling here. Yeah, uh, without a doubt. And the other part of that may also be that, you know, as we know, longer term, you know, I'm not calling a top to the market, but 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 longer term tops do tend to start with this kind of action. And so it looks, well, let me just say suspect. Uh, what I'll be doing, Mike, is I'll be drawing, you know, like I just put in a, an alert right here, just below the 20-day moving average line, which is just below the midsection of this candle. And if prices stay below that, so like when I leave the computer uh, after a bit, if prices stay below that, then uh, that's telling me that, hey, this, this you know, stayed intact. And then what I'd be looking at for next week, and I'll, let me swap this out for the SPY. What I'd be looking at for next week 
SBY should be looking kind of the same. Yeah, it does. Um, is if we get back, you know, like in this little air pocket right here between the 8 and the 20, or even if the hole continues to fall down, and we re-break through the 20, then that would provide a nice little trade, you know, about a buck and a half to the downside where it hits this support line. And if we get all the way down to the, the former support, you're talking about a three, you know, $3.48 trade uh, yeah. to, the, to the downside, which is nothing to sneeze at. You know, if it takes over, takes if it, it's finished within a couple of days. So, yeah. anyway, as we usually sign off, guys, have a great weekend, and um, you know, keep the egg growing. And thanks for emails. And Mike, I'm gonna look at some charts with the guys, and uh, if you want to bug out, bug out, and have a great weekend, everybody. Okay, we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks, Mike. See you, bud. Okay. Okay, let's look at some stocks. We've got a, a bunch here. You may, you, yes. So how many of you had a, have had an opportunity who are on uh, premium members to, to actually go in and, and take a look at that hole? I know a couple of folks have sent me emails uh, with very positive comments on it. And so uh, it is the first... Um, uh, it is the first webinar that is on the on the website for the premium members and, and the early warning alert members. And so you can jump in there and take a look at that. I thought it was, uh, I think it's a, a really good addition to the uh, to the uh, to the system because it integrated so so well. So let's see. Let's take a look at this. Uh, Okay, um, its volume is a little bit lower than what I like to see. However, energy is uh, is one of the um, areas where things are coming back into this. Uh, who sent me this? Gino, is this a um, uh, oil energy services oil oil fill? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so it's probably looking a lot like USO. And um, as we see here, it has put in what could be considered as a double bottom, traditional more uh, double bottom, with a midsection here about 59, uh, going all the way up to a midsection of about 68. So it definitely has the depth. Uh, so it looks better from a weekly perspective than it does from a daily. Uh, but it is, you know, once it does get a break out above this, you know, approximately 54 level, or you can draw this trend line in here, a break out above that trend line, it would definitely, you know, either a break out above that or a retest back here at 46 would make it a very interesting stock. Okay, I'm going to bounce up from the bottom here. Ne Oops. Okay, New Link Services again. Ah, it's got an okay, uh, over 500,000 share moving average uh, um, uh, shares per day. So that that fits that curve. Uh, it broke out of a really nice little cup and handle base uh, pattern, large cup and handle pattern on the. Uh, weekly chart did one retest for the breakout and is now trying to figure out what it wants to do from here. Um, Judy, if you're already in it, um, then you could basically, if you're already in it, you can do a couple of things. One, you can draw a trend line across here, and if you break below that trend line, or if you're applying some of the rules, like if you're following the eight-day moving average or the ten-day moving average, you get a strong close below it. Uh, <clears throat> You can lighten up on your position. Uh, right now, I'd be looking at. It looks like it's, you know, it's bouncing between. That's a pretty healthy bounce too, between 52 and 58, uh, and so it may be reset, resetting for another bounce higher. Uh, here's your in this string here. Here's your, your low day, and so a break back above that day or this little flag line that you can draw in here would uh, would be an okay. Uh, entry entry point. 
So are you already in it, uh, Judy? Okay, cool. Uh, QLYS. QLYS. Um, again, doing a, doing a pullback on an extending an extended uptrend. Now that is a little bit steep for for an uptrend to be able to maintain itself, but at the same time, as long as that stays intact, uh, we'll keep our eye on it. What I'd be looking at now, we have retested this breakout here at 50. It fell below it, and it may be going to rebound, or or but that's your initial pullback from the breakout. Um, what kind of pattern are we looking there? Just a little bit of a consolidation on the weekly pattern. So, and I would say, you know, fairly strong support here at about, you know, just, yeah, between the 20-day the and the breakout level of 50. We do have momentum coming out. We have true strength indicator pointing down and also some negative divergence on the weekly chart. And so that may be just be setting up for, you know, consolidation between 45 and 50 uh, before it does move higher. Okay. I've got to keep my eye on my clock because our granddaughter's coming over. Uh, C A B Y Cyber. Okay. Um, Cyber is, okay, Cyber is climbing up this right side of the, uh, the cup, if you will. However, the, the, the vigor with which it is climbing up it is of concern simply because your, 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 your uh, volume is a little bit below average and the days when the volume, you get, you get a week, you get a daily move here, which is a good buy, but it was it was basically um, covered the next day by a sell, same amount of volume, a little bit higher selling volume here. And so just taking a look at that, it, it appears as if the selling volume is, it, it, they're in a, in a chess match going back and forth uh, with the selling volume being approximately the same as the buying volume. And so let's see what we've got, other thing we've got going on here, Tracy. I know that uh, a lot of people are in this at eh, about 52 bucks. And so a couple of things you can do, you can either draw a trend line there or you can draw a trend line there. And so as you can see, if you got all the way back down to this trend line, you would be breaking the 20, breaking the 8, M, and um, also breaking down below the hull. Weekly. It's uh, if we finished right here, you'd have to count that as a as kind of a, a negative weekly candle, uh, spinning top with more sellers at the top than buyers at the bottom because it would if it finishes below the halfway mark. So I hope that helps. Let's see. Like a lot of the other oil-related uh, stocks, how Albertan is doing a, a similar pattern to what oil is looking like. Um, I'll put in UCO really quick, and you can see a it's almost m mirroring a, a at least a similar. I know it's not exactly the same, but mirroring a drop and, and it basically a big sell-off. Now we're basing. And Hal is doing some, kind of the same thing. If Hal, okay, when do we got earnings coming up? We've got earnings coming up on. Looks like either. Looks like Monday, 4:20, and it'll be BMO. So if you are along this already, you're gonna want to uh, um, we'll watch it. And uh, if, you, if you don't have a profit cushion in it, you might want to lighten up a little bit since it does announce prior to the market um, opening on Monday. I will be kind of limited with my access. Uh, but right now it's basically 
higher lows, higher highs, and so you can define it as being back into at least a short-term uptrend. And if you are, like I said, if you're already in it, it would be a good time to just say, hey, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, profit off the table here. Grub. Yeah, Grub was one we promoted on our list this week. Ah. There we go. Uh, Grubhub. It is basically just chewing up a consolidation here on the daily chart, uh, bouncing. You've got support at 40, about 43-ish. You've got resistance at various levels up to 47. Um, it is getting a, a bounce off the, the eight-week moving average, which is approximately equivalent to the 50. And uh, we'll see if we, you know, can break out above this level. Right now, it's it's holding very well, considering the market's uh, uh, sell-off today. So what do we got? Earnings are coming up on 57 uh, AMC. So yeah, um, like I said, I elevated Grubhub back to the watch list uh, this week, but still waiting for it to put in some kind of a pattern to say, yeah, it's time to get in. AFSI. Uh, AFSI, you know, it is back up to a resistance level from this prior high. So one could say it is either setting up for a double top, and if you are in this trade, there's nothing wrong with shaving a little bit of your profits off if you got in down here or if you got in from a point here and you've had a nice little run up because right now we're just driving sideways at a resistance level. Uh, earnings coming up on 430, which is about a week and a half from now. But um, it, you know, as you can see, these here's your. Uh, Right here, you can see that that is your past, you know, prior high. And it made a couple of pushes to try to get over that this week. And each one of those advances for a potential breakout was repelled. They were taking no borders. PAYC. Uh, PAYC is also one of those stocks that um, I'm watching. And it's, over this week, it hadn't really done anything. And so, oh, I'd be concerned, well, kind of a little quasi head and shoulders type pattern on a daily chart. So if we get a close below this 29.55 level, then it may be starting to slip down. As you can see that all the, the eight day cross, uh, cross below the 20, which is a bearish indication, and, of course, the uh, HMA is totally pink, but we are at a strong past support level. However, the candle is not telling us it's ready to f turn around. The Dow is down 323. Is that right, Gino? Wow. Well, we were looking for a reset, and that definitely is. I think that, that would probably qualify as being a reset. Yeah, 329. Nice. Again, you know, when I say it's nice that the Dow's down that much, it's not, not because I want the market to become a bear market or anything like that, but we need something to clear the air to provide some resets. Uh, let's do a couple of more here, and then I've got to uh, get on to getting on with Fire. Again, another great stock. However, it is on a weekly chart. We had a big run up, and then a big sell off. What's the what is the uh, the um, 
volume telling us? It's telling us that one, this little spike up right here was done on a below average volume, which also always makes that kind of a little uh, run up very suspect. And now we are getting basically a, a reversal selling off lower low, well, correction, lower high, lower low. And so it may be starting one of those, you know, we've all seen them is one of those channel things where you basically, you basically have the, the stock running in a channel, or in this one it's an expanding channel, which is, so where I anticipate a, a drop, not all at one time, but down into this area. Uh, is there support down in 30, between 38 and 36? There sure is. And so that may it may be going on to re revisit that. So one more, folks, and then I am going to okay CTXS. Okay, nice little consolidation. A little bit of sell up on the weekly chart. Again, setting up for earnings coming up on the twenty second. After market closed, AMC, and basically it has just been moving sideways, but in a nice trading range, from 61 to 66, that's about a 9% uh, trading range, and it has started to set up a session of higher lows and higher highs. So and it may just be posturing, getting ready for what's going to be taking place uh, uh, with earnings next week. So. Folks, I am going to call it a um, well, Kihu. I want to do Kihu. Because it uh, will also, and the Kihu has earnings coming out on 527, so at the end of the month, uh, uh, end of May. Kihu has made basically a, a really nice little recovery here after a pretty hard sell off. Or, um, where it acquiesced to the market, uh, uh, sold off real hard, found support here about 45, has made a really nice $20 rebound from that. And uh, we just got to watch uh, Kihu to see if if we're going to get a sim uh, situation similar to what we see in this area here. As we can see, the hole is turned pink. And so where's likely support? You know, there's support where it's at right now at approximately 58. But we know somewhere between 58 and 55, there's a strong, you know, 55 is the stronger level of, of support. So, uh, it, you know, could it move all the way down to 55 and then rebound? Yeah, sure it could. Um, but it also, 57, 50, 50 is another level of support. And so part of the thing is just identifying those levels of support and then, watching the price action to see what happens at those levels of support. So, folks, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, thanks to Mike. He is always uh, a, a great, you know, I, I love working with the guy, and, and um, uh, I hope you appreciate him bringing his expertise also to uh, the How to Make Money Trading Stocks webinar. And uh, please share, and if you have enjoyed this, please share and let other people know the kind of things we're doing. And uh, have a great weekend, and God bless everybody. Bye-bye.